Okay, so I need to build a coil winder. What's that, and why do I need one? Coils are used in all sorts of vintage audio equipment. Like this electrical pickup. Loudspeakers. Even doorbells. Now this is a loudspeaker, even if it doesn't look much like one. It's actually a neat little vintage device which allows you to play your radio through a gramophone or phonograph. Today you could use it to hook up an MP3 player and play whatever you wanted. Previously though, I'd found that it was faulty. We just touched the terminals there. I'm not getting anything at all on the meter. If I touch them together like that, you can see I'm getting continuity, but nothing through here. So basically, the coil that's in here isn't connected and therefore it's not going to work. I took it to pieces to check the coil inside. It's actually two coils. These form an electromagnet to convert the electrical signals into vibrations. So there doesn't seem to be anything really holding that in place apart from possibly magnetism. There we are. Coils are out. I'm checking the coils together as a pair. But also individually. Both are open circuit unfortunately. The only option is to take off the old wire and wind on some new stuff. I need to get the old wire off so I can measure its diameter and buy some new stuff. The wire is very thin and measures about 0.07mm with a micrometer. This is just under 3 thou. I think it might take ages to get off by hand. So let's get on with building the machine. I should be able to use it for unwinding as well as winding. I did think of using my little lathe. Similar lathes were used back in the day to wind electrical coils. However, I'm going to build something similar to my DIY cylinder phonograph. The idea is that the coil being wound will constantly revolve and the mechanism at the back will move back and forth to spread the wire evenly across the coil. Like the phonograph, this involves designing and 3D printing various parts. I'm using FreeCAD to do all the design work. This is one end of the reel holder for the new wire. Here is the reel holder being printed out on my end of three. The main motor bracket is directly reused from the cylinder phonograph. I salvaged two of these stepper motors from an old Xerox printer some time ago. This project is using the one I didn't use for the cylinder phonograph. This is the chuck piece to hold the end of the empty spool. I need one for each end. I'm designing them in two parts as it's easier. The spool is oddly shaped and has no hole through the middle so it has to be held at the ends. They are universal, so though the spool isn't symmetrical, it will go in either way around. I'm going to use an old DVD or CD drive for the wire spreader mechanism. This has its own built-in stepper motor. I've done some work on this already, but it's not needed for unwinding, so I'm going to finish it later. Both motors will be driven from an Arduino controller and a couple of stepper driver circuits. 
Okay, so this is the basic arrangement. It's really like a lathe with a headstock and a tailstock. So now, time to load the first ball for unwinding. A little bit of double sided tape will help to hold the ends in place. The other end of the spool turns on a bearing, which is the motor from an old hard disk drive. So now I can start removing the wire properly. The wire does get caught up a few times, so I have to keep stopping and restarting. I do want to do as much on the machine as possible though, as it is counting the turns. Great, that's off now. That's nearly 5,200 turns, and doesn't include some wire I took off by hand. I estimate there may have been 5,500 turns on there. Now the wire is off, you can see it was joined to a thicker connecting wire, the join being insulated with some sort of tape. Time now to fit the other motor, which spreads the wire across the spool. I've bought a new reel of suitable wire. This should be enough for quite a few coils. Just need to put the reel holder together now. Hopefully it will turn freely enough for the wire not to break. Just before I continue, I'm going to clean the rust off the spool with some metal polish. I'm also going to replace the insulating tape with some modern stuff. Now time to thread the machine up. The thin coil wire needs to be soldered onto some slightly thicker wire. This thicker wire goes onto the spool first and out the edge. Now I can start winding the new wire. That seems to be working. Every time the spool rotates, the DVD drive moves the wire along slightly to build up a nice layer. When the wire gets to the other end of the spool, the DVD drive reverses and builds up the layer in the other direction. The reversal at the two ends is triggered by these micro switches, also salvaged from old equipment. The two screws here will allow me to fine tune when to reverse the direction, but it seems to be fine the way I have it set now. Just checking to see how warm the DVD motor is getting. If they get too hot I can just reduce the voltage, but not too much or it will stop working. I've loosened up the reel holder and it is working fine. Not sure why there are loose strands here though. So I'm aiming for 5500 turns. If you are enjoying this video, then please give it a like. Thank you. The Arduino is sending back the count to my laptop. Just coming up to 3000 turns. Of 
coil is looking good too. Still a bit worried about those loose strands. Now 4,000 turns. and the big 5,000 turns mark. Okay, so we have stopped as the wire's broken. Not quite as many turns as intended, but probably enough. Just need to solder the thicker wire onto the end. and the resistance looks much as expected. Right, I've got both of them wound now, so just fitting them back in the needle phone. Work on the second spool started well, and I found a quick way to get the old wire off. I didn't need to count the turns this time. The winding also started well, But the wire broke quite soon, so I had to solder it together again. And then... Disaster! The wire broke again, and I couldn't find the free end on the reel. I tried cutting into it, but no good. The new wire was useless. Fortunately, I discovered the wire inside little clock mechanisms was the same thickness. Rather than designing a new holder, I just held it in my fingers. One clock reel wasn't enough though. Fortunately, I had a second one. Amazingly, in the end, the two cores had very similar resistances. So do the cores work? If I connect a 1.5 volt battery up, I should get a click. Both coils work independently. And also together. Right, that will do for now. I'll do another video showing finishing off the needle phone and getting that working again. If you enjoyed this video, then you might like this one. Thanks and see you in the next one.